Hey everyone, it's Sharon Sheldon here with John Paduchak from Hang Casting Made Easy and we're going to be talking all about Google Hangouts today and how to use it for creating content in your business. Now I just want to do a quick sound check and see whether people can hear us. I've got a few answers so far. Yes. Oh, and Ted's here. Ted is John's partner and he yes, is I am. visiting Good. us from um, Egypt. Egypt. <laughs> where he's on a cruise, so we're all jealous. Anyway, I'm going to hand it right over to John because he's the expert and he's going to do most of the talking here, so make sure you have your questions. We have some that people sent in and we will cover others on the call. Here you go, John. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Sharon. It's, it's great to be here. And um, I was just going to start out, actually, with some of the questions that were sent in and kind of at least bring them up. I'll, I'll obviously talk, talk about them in more detail as we go on, but um, first question that came up with is with can, can one record a hangout training presentation also prepare it as an effective podcast version of the training with perhaps a download uh, of an ebook or guide notes you know we look at hangouts as like the ultimate repurposing mechanism I'll talk about that as we go along in the presentation but um, it, it is it's fantastic for that not only can you set it up with a with a hangout webinar or some kind of a training presentation but you can then get that transcribed that could be your uh, ebook or notes or whatever it might be as well as your podcast so you could set that up and do that absolutely you can do that um, we were also asked if there's any special equipment involved or needed to do a Google Hangout and there is only the equipment that like for instance you'll see Sharon and I both have earbuds on you know for, for people who don't have earbuds maybe maybe you've got a nice headset something like that right We'll show and tell today. <laughs> and of course, when Ted started out with us, the, all he had was a C920 camera and a pair of earbuds. So that's probably the minimum place to get started is a really good camera. Totally recommend the Logitech C920 or C930 and a set of earbuds. Microphone built into that C920 camera is fabulous. And it, uh, it takes a lot of the processing away from uh, your PC in using it. And let's see, people often ask, do I need some kind of third-party software to do webinars? And the answer is no. Uh, actually, with some of the new features that they put in Google Hangouts, it's a spectacular first place to get started doing webinars without actually having specialized webinar software. We'll show you as we go along, Sharon and I, that there's some, there's some really cool tricks that you can do if you have something like Webinar Jam, um, which, we'll, which we'll do a little later on. We talked about it ahead of time. And I think you'll enjoy some of the stuff that we show you about that. And it does. It makes a big, big difference as far as, you know, really marketing stuff in a, in a unique way. Um, and it has all the marketing tools that we need to be able to do that really, really well. So you don't need special software, fancy software to get started. And I think there was a third question that we had, Sharon. I'm trying to nail it down. Um, well, there's a new question. Uh, when it's advantageous to use a Hangout over a webinar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, it's... Probably one of the re places where it's most advantageous to use a Hangout over webinar. I'll talk about it as I go along and show you the different aspects of Google Plus and YouTube. But the different places that it would be advantageous is depending on your privacy, whether you want it to be something that's very public or something very private. So like for instance, our webinars, a lot of times we want them to be very public. We'd like more people to attend um, that maybe we don't know that would resonate with us. Our events, that same kind of thing. And I'm going to walk through those areas in Google Plus. So hey, um, okay, last last one I answer and I'll start with the presentation. <laughs> Sarah asked, are Hangouts private or will you ever see uh, that you're conducting a Hangout? Um, they can be private or they can be public. Totally depends on you. I'm going to show you today how you can record them publicly and how you can do them privately. So you get to choose how you want people to see them or if you want them to see them at all. And little, little do most folks know, but there's like five different ways to start a Google Hangout, not just one. Most of us think just one, right? How many people knew that? Did anybody know that, that there's more than one way to start a Google Hangout? Curious. And of course, we've got some questions if you want to do the poll, Sharon, and we'll see. Um, sure. Sorry, I was just starting to answer Nisha, who said she can't, she doesn't have any volume. Um, but there's, uh, Nisha, I was going to say, if you hover over the Hangout under settings that could be it 
Um, Could be. And you may have to refresh, too, as far as that goes. Yeah. If you're having a browser issue, you might want to just try refreshing your browser. So the polls, have you ever run a Hangout on air? Is that your question? Yeah, let's start with that one. That's a good one. You know, I'm, I'm always fascinated, Sharon. Whenever I talk to a group of people, um, and I'll say, have you run your own Hangout on the air and recorded it? Have you ever been a member of a panel? Or have you watched one from the sidelines on YouTube? The answer that I get most of the time, what would you imagine that is? I've only watched it. Never been involved with one, never recorded it. I've only just watched. So that is the answer that I'm kind of expecting to see today. It'd be interesting to see. But that's yeah, what I'm definitely. expecting to see. So we'll let, we'll let the poll run for a couple minutes, and I'm just going to share and show you guys some stuff. Excellent. Provided I can get to the right tab. And I have to say, it's a lot easier than I thought it would be running a uh, Hangout on air. Once you've done it once and you get kind of comfortable with all the settings. Yeah, Webinar Jam makes it much, much easier to do. Yeah. You'll notice, oh no, I've been signed out. <laughs> oh no. Here we go, here we go, here we go. I think we're good. All right, so one of the things that you'll commonly see whenever we're getting started with doing Hangouts, and, and we always look at this, as far as I know, I think Ted, Ted and I are the only two people who really teach Hangouts this way. Um, Google Hangouts are really lot more of a larger, or part of a larger platform, right? They're part of Google+, Plus. they're very tied into YouTube, and um, you know Google owns YouTube. So we want to make sure that we, we're off to a good start and we kind of get things together in the best possible way. And the way that we do that is the very first place that we're starting out is we want to have some kind of minimum presence on Google+. Plus um, Because we, we're going to start doing Hangouts, and don't get me wrong, we can start doing Hangouts before this stuff is uh, totally set up. But the picture that you want to... Um, uh, portray is one that you've spent some time here, that you've put together a story. People are going to want to come back from your Hangout, come to your Google Plus page, and get to know you a little bit better. And as you can see, this is one of our pages that we're just working on right now. And, and right straight out of the Google box and Google Plus, this is what it would look like. You can see we've got no profile picture here, and we've got no cover image here. This is just your straight, basic cover image. And what fun is it going to be if somebody comes over and they're like, oh, I wonder what posts, I wonder about this person. And you see that there's nothing here, right? Um, in fact, this, this is more here than what you would see typically because, like I said, we're just starting to work it out. Um, you go to posts. It's a new page. This one actually does have some posts. Photos. There's no photos available. Uh, there's no videos because there's no YouTube channel tied to it yet. So... One thing is you're starting to do Hangouts and starting to get things in line. Maybe you don't have everything perfect yet. Big thing is just get started doing them. But do start to work on getting your story together and putting that down so that it looks more professional and it's, it's representative of you. I hope that makes sense. So what I want to show you next is, maybe, there we go, is what it's supposed to look like. Okay, you've seen here, now I've got my photo. And once, one thing you'll see quite frequently is you're always going to see me in a yellow or blue shirt in most cases. Um, we, that, it's kind of part of our branding. We want to kind of do that almost to the point that, you know, people don't begin to think we, do our, we don't do our laundry anymore kind of thing, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but we do. You want to be seen a certain way um, when you appear in different things. And, and, you know, my way of being portrayed is I like to be portrayed casually and... Um, you know, usually yellow or blue is my better colors. Uh, you can see that I've got posts. You can see that, you know, some of the communities that, uh, that I'm part of, these are actually communities of mine. Okay. If you go to my About page, you can actually see my full story. Learn about how, and Ted, and I, how Ted and I connected to do hand casting. Um, some of the different things that I've been involved in. It's a great place to introduce yourself to people um, bring out your bragging rights, give them a place to see communities that you're part of, um, and also, you know, give them some links to maybe your sites, uh, your social media profiles. I almost look at Google Plus now as one of my contact pages on the internet. 
this is going to be one place where people can come to find me. And if you're going to be doing Hangouts, you want to be able to have them come back to this um, and be able to connect with you in a meaningful way. Um, next thing I have is, I guess I'm going to do this all the way along here. Well, photos. Okay. I use Google to store a lot of my photos. Um, we take a lot of pictures in Hangouts. You can see some of them here. I'm not sure whether you can see this one moving around. I know I asked Sharon the other day um, if she knew what an auto awesome photo was. <laughs> no, I don't. Right? <laughs> can, can you see this now? I thought it was a video. Where it's, it looks like a video. What it is, it's a bunch of stitched together, stitched together photos and it creates like a little mini video. And Google does this automatically. So that's why we take a lot of pictures inside of Google Hangouts so that we can get these little videos that are kind of stitched together. They create some intrigue. And some of them are really fascinating, especially if you produce together a lot of photos, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, and again, Google Hangouts doesn't show this well, so I'm not sure how many of you are seeing this out there. But if you're seeing this, you know, let me know. I'm going to try to point out a couple more examples here. So you can see, Sharon, we do a lot of photos inside of Google Hangouts. And who loves photos, right? Twitter loves photos. Instagram loves photos. Facebook loves photos and mini videos. You know, we're creating a ton of content and memes and different things that we can bring over and parts of our presentation um, that we can easily pull into social media. It's simple to do, right? If I come down here a little bit further, uh, this is a funny one. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm sure Sharon can see this. These are all still pictures, but I'm, I don't know whether you guys can see these in the audience or not. Um, what I did is I went to an air show here in Nashua. You know, my wife and I love the World War II, World War II planes or big buffs. Um, one of our friends actually flies for these guys. And um, we went there and took all these still photos. The next day, we go on and we have all our photos uploaded to, to uh, Google+. And here we are, all these auto-awesome little mini-movies of the planes jockeying around on the, uh, on the tarmac. How neat is that? So... Think about how you might be able to utilize that, you know, in your marketing, in your branding, with different things that you do, and uh, do take photos within your Hangouts. And anyway, can uh, go we ahead. Just check, and can people see that? Because I'm I'm kind of watching it live on a on my iPad on the side, and it went a little fuzzy for me. So I just wanted okay. to check check there with people whether they yeah. can see it. So somebody, when you get a chance, answer. Um, now it seems okay to me. So. Okay. If anyone wants to answer that, that would be great. Go Excellent. on. Go on. Awesome. No, thanks for thanks for chiming in because it it's important. You know, we um, we think of Hangouts as a, just a great way to produce video, but it's a great way to produce a ton of content and use it in ways that many people don't really think about. And this is just one aspect of it. But as you can see, our Google Plus is tied to a lot of things here: our posts, our photos, our YouTube. If I click this, it would bring you to my YouTube channel. Um, different things that we've plus one, so other people's content that we've plus and, and shared, so they can see the kind of content that we tend to like and you know revolve around as well, which is kind of good because if let's say there's a particular marketer you like to know how to portray uh, content that's going to attract them to share with you or you know uh, engage with you on social media, um, is a great way to kind of see. Who, you know, what kinds of things they plus one. Um, anyways, you know, so there's some really big, big advantages to this in Google Plus and getting that right up front. Hangouts. That's why we're here today, right? We want to talk a little bit about Hangouts. How many of you are aware that there are two different kinds of Hangouts? That there's Hangouts on the air and there's video Hangouts. And if you want to just kind of pipe in in the chat, yeah, I know there's Hangouts on the Air and Video Hangouts, or I didn't know that. Love mm -hmm. to hear about it. Do we um, have that as a poll question? Actually, I'm going to end that other poll. So yeah. We can go into that one. And by the way, if we go over there, have you ever run a Hangout on Air? No was 71%, and yes well, was 29%. You see, so. and that, I see that so commonly. And the, the thing that really keeps people from doing that is that fear. You know, Hangouts are simple, but they're not easy. There's a little bit of a ramp-up process to get started with it. And that's what we see in our coaching program and different things that we do. Because 
um, there's just kind of still that fear factor, like it's it's uh, that 800 pound telephone I've got to pick up, or <laughs> you know what I mean? It um, it's definitely hard to get started. We we see that same answer over and over again. So the thing today is I want to show you that there's no reason to be fearful about Google Hangouts, and the big thing is to just kind of get started with it. Um, I find the easiest way to do that is get a workout buddy, so that you can just kind of get things rolling and and um, you know make things happen with it. So here we are with Hangouts on Air and Video Hangouts, and let me explain the difference between the two. A video hangout is essentially a hangout that's not recorded. As easy as that, as easy as that is. So if you want to practice, learn the controls. Uh, video Hangouts, great place to start. Start a video hangout. No recording involved, but you still have all the same controls down the left hand side. Which hopefully I can share a few of those with you. Um, if Sharon will be my uh, my helper on that one. Sure. So we'll see if we can make that work a little bit. So the video yeah. hangout, you have nothing that you can use afterwards, right? No, no. It's really more for um, meetings with your clients, mm -hmm. um, where you don't want them recorded. That kind of a chat, or right? A chat so with more friends. like a like a Skype type. Yeah, thing, yeah. Basically. More like a Skype type thing. Okay. And, and of course, Hangouts on Air is what we typically know as this is what gets recorded to YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. So if I click on Hangouts on Air, and let me let me say this is one way to create a Hangout. Hey, look, this is us right here, <laughs> showing live and publicly. How about that? So you can see right now that if somebody comes over to Hangouts on Air and they're just looking here, and where this is shared publicly, what's going to happen? People will go, Wow, this looks really cool. I'd like to know how to use Google Hangouts in our content marketing. And we probably got people watching us right now from Google Plus. Don't know how many, but I bet you anything, a couple people are watching from the audience today. Just from here. So they can see that Hangout, it's it's public even though we're inside a webinar jam today. All right. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. So if we create a Hangout on air, and I'll just kind of do that really quickly, um, you can see that we can just give it a simple name. Uh, tell people what it's about, and it's important to kind of look at this as, remember how we used to do um, our articles when we were naming them? We we try to put some good keywords in the front, maybe hyphenate it, and put a little twist on the back with a with a different keyword. Think about that for your Hangouts on Air. Try to give some thought to what people will be looking for, because these Hangouts will rank right away. So I mean, I just want to share with you, these things will rank like within minutes. Um, of producing them. So in other words, this one that we're doing right now, you could probably find it in uh, Google. If you went to google.com and did a search for it, um, it would probably show up almost immediately, within seconds or minutes in many, many cases. Um, so you want to be careful what you name it, what you call it. If you don't want people to find it, you also want to make sure what you name it and what you call it. You want to make it very indescript, something that people wouldn't look for or search for. Um, even test might not be a good one because people kind of like to watch other people's tests, if you know what I mean. Uh, maybe call it something like S or <laughs> give, it a, give it a letter number name or something like that. You can also schedule Hangouts on Air for later. So you just don't, you don't have to do them just for now. They can be for later too. And we can make it to the public as this one is. We could invite a limited group of people. We could invite a particular circle. So I mean, it's not always having to be for the public. So this is a great way for us to eliminate this down to a particular group, Sharon. People often ask me, how do I limit this down to, say, my coaching group of four people? Simple. We take public out, and we just go, and we start to invite um, the people that we want. So you can see different people pop up as we do that. So we can just invite single the single people that we'd like to come and view our event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did something like that once where I wanted to do a customer focus group. So I just invited the customers who had agreed to participate. Maybe some of them are on the call today. Mm -hmm. And um, recorded that because everybody wanted to see it afterwards, but I made it private. I took it out of the Google Plus and, um, and then kept it private on YouTube. Yeah, and you know, events are great because you've got now a Q&A function within the event. Mm -hmm. We've got, uh, Google has given us what they call the showcase app, so it allow us to show um, different things that we're talking about along the edge of the event as it's playing. 
So we can um, we can put out say I want you to take a look at this site or I want you to take a look at this product link or whatever it might be, and we can post those up as part of the showcase app. And all these all these apps are turned on inside of events now automatically. Other thing we can do is put in a great trailer. So one thing, hey, we're working in video, right? We want people to see that um, you know we can produce a short kind of summary video of what we're going to be talking about. And you'll notice Sharon and I did that the other day, although I think our video didn't come out so good and you re-recorded it. But, um, you know, it's really, really big because you're going to get to see us, at least in that little trailer video, it's like watching a trailer for a movie and decide in that couple of, in a couple of instances whether or not, um, yeah, you know, this is something I'd really like to watch. I like what uh, John and Sharon are talking about, what they're going to be teaching today. And that's something that really makes sense and resonates with me. So it'll really make you decide whether it's something, you know, you feel like watching or not at that particular given time. So after we've come in here and doing a Hangout Now doesn't create, well, it creates an event for us, but um, if we do a Hangout later, um, you know, just allows us to determine when that's going to be. So we have a choice of now or later for when we're going to set up that Hangout for and then events, I'm going to talk about two different things with events. First thing I want you to notice is taking a look at the graphics, right? I, I know Sharon just went through a big rebrand, and we've done a lot of stuff with our branding as well. What stands out to you in looking at this, right? You see some interesting things that kind of pop out. You want something that's representative of your branding. Um, and you can see that people are putting some text in about what the uh, the actual presentation itself is all about that they're giving. And I think that that's really important. They stand out, um, they're right there on the page in front of you, and they really give you some kind of thought process as to whether this is something you're going to want to watch. You want to you think about how you can stand out from the crowd here. If I look at, say, this one here, uh, Google Partners on Call, yeah, it's a nice little graphic, but it doesn't really catch me. Um, they do have some text, but it's too small to read. It doesn't really stand out, does it? And you'll see here's one here that um, my buddy Jason Benoit did. And I think Jason just took a, a graphic right from, um, right out of Google that he used. So you want to find ways that you can come up with graphics that stand out. And most of the time, you'll see graphics like this, right? Just the plain Google Plus graphics. Again, plain Google Plus, Plus graphics. So do something that represents your brand, that stands out, that people are going to want to come to look at and watch. And I'm going to go to iTunes in a little bit, too. And the same is really true there. Because I know many of you, this is what we do. You know, we talk, we talk about repurposing our Hangouts as podcasts. So, you know, I want to make sure that we kind of bring iTunes into the picture a little bit as well towards the end. So I'm going to talk about the same exact thing. What, what can you do to make your graphics stand out in these events? So, John, can I just ask a quick question there? Um, sure. So these graphics are ones you specific upload for a Hangout on air, or are they your... Google Plus Hangout, because I w wasn't asked or given the option to put a graphic for this particular Hangout. Gotcha. No, in fact, this, this Hangout's actually started a whole different way. Um, but in Google Events, they ask mm -hmm. us for um, if we're doing a Hangout. Mm -hmm. uh, a Hangout on Air is actually another version of an event. It's, it's, a it's, it's just a Hangout event. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's going to ask us in that event as we're setting up our Hangout on Air, do we want to have special graphics or anything like that? And it allow us to add in, just like it allows us to add in a cover photo, um, graphics that are representative of, of what we're planning to be talking about. So you can do custom graphics for these. And definitely, as you can see, it makes a big difference, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Now, for us, we were just doing a coaching thing. We didn't really care what the graphics were looking like. It's a closed coaching, you know, we're more concerned about the inside content versus people coming and looking at it. We almost don't want it to stand out, but um, it's a pro you know these are private events, many of these coaching events. Mm -hmm. 
So like I said, something I wanted to go through because your graphics here do stand out and you want to give some thought to well, what are some of the topics people are talking about, especially if you want to start a Hangout on Air type show um, or Hangout on Air series. What are the topics people are talking about and, you know, again, how do I stand out with title, um, content, and graphics? Because those are the things that are going to make you stand out from other people in the same arena. Now, do we have any questions on anything so far, Sharon? Um, there are some. Ted's been kind of um, asking, uh, answering some as we went along. Let's see if oh, we cool. missed any. Uh, do you need a second person to help you do a hangout? We answered. How do you get to where you are on the screen for Google Hangout? Okay, I can show you that in a second too. You, um, you'll notice that over on the left hand side, you've got your home tab. And underneath that is your profile, people, photos, communities, events, and Hangouts. And if you go to Hangouts, this is where you'll see that pop up. Okay? And then that's how I got to the, the Hangouts on the air screen. But again, I'm going to show you a couple other ways to record a Hangout as well. Um, so what I've showed you so far is using, using the Hangout um, on air tab to um, record a public or a private hangout that you're limiting down to a number of people. So those are two things that I've showed you so far. I'm going to show you three other ways that you can record a hangout as well. I'm going to go to it in just a couple of seconds. Um, there is, there's another question from Sarah. Do the private events show up on the public feed? No, the private events don't show up on the public feed. So people will never see a private event. It just shows up to the people that you've invited only. They're the only ones that can see it. Okay. In fact, if I get a chance, I'll pop back to that, and I, and I can show you where you can click, and you can see um, who the only people are that are able to see a um, privately shared event. Okay? okay, that's new since the last time I had tried to do one. They didn't have that option. Ah, actually, it's been around, like, almost forever. <laughs> well, maybe so, it wasn't. Maybe I wasn't doing it right. <laughs> I think that's probably what it is, and that's what we see is that right. you know most people just aren't aware that it's there, and so hence would never really know about it. I should have um, asked you first, obviously. <laughs> I know. Well, it's a common you know it's a common question that people do ask, and um, you know I'll probably talk about that when we actually talk a little bit about the um, the webinar platforms because that's kind of how we're, where that all came around. And um, like I said, I'm going to just shuffle that off a touch. One other thing here that I think people should be aware of is the Explore tab at the top of Google+. And the reason I say that is because this shows you different things you might want to explore according to your topic. It lets you plug in a hashtag, hashtag and see what else is there. So if I were to plug in hashtag Hangouts, I'd have a whole bunch of stuff that comes up about Google Hangouts. Um, it also lets me look at what's trending, kind of like Google Alerts, but it's just for Google+. And the great thing about Google+, too, is if you produce content, it's not like Facebook where you've got edge rank. Everybody sees it here. And um, the Google+, Plus bunch is kind of a more cerebral bunch of people. Um, I don't want to say they're more, more highly educated, but they're, more, they're definitely more techie than you would encounter on, um, on Facebook. So you'll definitely get people who are kind of more techy interacting with your stuff here. And it's a good crowd. It's a little different crowd than you run into on Facebook where kind of everybody's over there. Um, so keep that in mind. It, it is a great place to get good content out on. It, it's a big platform. And um, people will interact with you here. So keep that in mind. Uh, Joel Kahn did a study not too long ago where he compared Facebook and Google+. And he was really pleasantly surprised because he said so many, so few people in some instances saw his content on Facebook because of EdgeRank and here on Google Plus he was getting a whole different group of people interacting with him than would normally interact with him there and everybody saw his content. So something to keep in mind. Definitely you want to play here even though you think um, you know Google Plus may not be a big player in this arena. It's still a, it's still a park you'd like to play in. All right. Hey John, do you want to 
do one of the next poll questions in here? Yeah. What do we got for the next one? We got, are you interested in using, I can't read the whole thing, Hangouts and Air as a webinar solution? Perfect. Okay. Yeah, let's plug that in. Oh, actually, I think it was how to use Hangouts. I think the question is how to use Hangouts as a webinar solution. Oh, that oh, was no, a question. Yeah, you just can't. <laughs> no, it's a poll. No, it's a poll question. It's just you can't see it all. On um, at least on my screen, you can't see it. The gotcha. whole question. So if you're listening and want to answer, Go it's, ahead. Are you interested <laughs> in learning how to use Hangouts as a webinar solution? Okay. Yep. And now Let you can it. see it. Let us know, and then we can tell you a little bit about those webinar solutions. And obviously, this is the first time I've used this particular platform and uh, and software. Well, since the last time I did a Hangout on Air, things have changed a little bit. They've added a lot of stuff. Yeah, and when and when I talk about that a little bit, you're going to see why we like to use this platform versus a lot of others. There's some really cool things you can do with it, mm -hmm. and um, you know, like I said, I'll kind of explain those in a minute. I was talking about um, the different ways that you could start a Hangout. And there's two, there's a couple additional ways from YouTube that you can do that. And they are right here. If you come into YouTube and we get to uh, the upload area, which is literally, we've, we've come into YouTube, we've um, selected our profile and come to it, and upload just sits right here. You'll see there's some really neat tools in here that, um, it's funny sharing like how many people don't know that these are even here. So I think you guys are seeing as I'm going through this that, wow, Hangouts is really dependent on Google Plus and YouTube. And the answer is, yeah, <laughs> because it's all really tied in closely together. You can see that we can import our videos from Google Plus if we have something over there. There's a mm -hmm. webcam capture and record. I love to use this, like, for instance, um, maybe you just want to do a quick video that you want to send out by email. It lets you set up a quick mm -hmm. uh, webcam video that you can connect into an email and shoot out to um, uh, to your list. Um, you want to do a photo slideshow, you can create a slideshow here. Hey, look at this one. You can do a Google Hot, Google Plus Hangouts on Air right from the upload. How neat is that? And the thing that's different about this is sometimes we want to do a very kind of quick Hangout, and all we have to do is put in title and description and click uh, Take Me to Start the Broadcast. And you're in right away. And of course, we got the video editor, so we can come here and edit our videos. But there's a lot of pieces here next to upload that you know we can utilize as well. Mm -hmm. we talk, we're talking about Google Plus and getting things set up. Um, you can see this is uh, the channel for our podcast. I'm just getting it started and put together. But this is pretty much what you'd see for someone getting started, except they wouldn't have the corner graphic. You know, you've got, uh, you'd have like a blue logo here, just like on Google Plus. You'd have just this gray background and only a Google Plus uh, connection here and no intro video. So, I mean, literally a channel with nothing. So, the same things that I said about Google Plus are really true here as well. You're going to want to be able to have people come over here and see um, your, profi your profile picture, your branding. Um, and have that all fit into like a nice little tight package. You can have additional links here too. I can have a link to Twitter, to my Facebook, to um, a special Facebook page, website. You know, the, the listing is endless. You can have like 17 links here. So that's pretty considerable. And if somebody wants to find you, what better way to do that than just click a link and go there? You so could you have make a sure. sorry, yeah. sorry to interrupt. Uh, you could have a link to your to some sort of freebie, right? You could have a link to like one of your websites that would direct them to a to a freebie page or a pay, one of your pages on your website that has a, um, mm -hmm. you know, subscribe on it. Right. So yeah, there's a lot of things that you can do here. So I mean, keep that in mind. You got a lot of real estate to take advantage of here. Like mm -hmm. I said, 17 links that are available to you. So you want to make very good, wise use of them. And a lot of the same things that are true with Google Plus are true here. You know, we've got our videos. We, we can put together playlists. Um, we can see other channels. We've got uh, discussion area. And about, you know, again, is information about us as the person who owns the channel. So you want to make sure you take advantage of those, um, of those places. And again, I, I would still say that the biggest thing is to get started doing Hangouts 
work on this stuff a little as you go on because everybody at some point or another goes, wow, you know, this was a really great video. I'd like to learn more about the person who made it and see kind of like where they sit in, in things. And um, you're going to want to have information about here, so about you here so they can contact you and, you know, get more information about the different things that you do. So take good full advantage of it. So by comparison to this, this is our, um, our hand casting channel and you can see that, you know, we do have our graphics in place, our profile. We've got a header in place. Um, we've got a link to our site, Google+, Facebook page, um, and we've got a couple of intro videos. So, big difference, right, between the two. Which one looks more professional to you? That's the obvious, the obviously, the obvious question, right? And then finally, here, um, I had mentioned to you that I wanted to show you another place where you could record your videos and can and could control more thoroughly how they're seen by your audience. And this is the spot. If we come into Creator Studio, which is literally, we click on our profile on YouTube, um, click on Creator Studio, brings us into here. I'm actually going to go here. Hopefully my internet speed will keep up with me well between this and doing a Hangout. Um, there we go. Because the other thing Google has done, which is great in YouTube, is they show you your analytics and how many people are coming to this area. Now, a lot of these videos here are private, so you can see we don't have a lot of channel stats for it yet. Um, there's no real public videos out on it. But you can see the analytics, and they do such a great job telling you how you can brand your content better. Um, they give you all these great tips. So one of the big things, I think, if you're getting started with YouTube is just come in and read and take advantage of some of the different things that they tell you here. Go ahead, Sharon. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say that um, in the that last poll, are you interested in learning how to use Hangouts as a webinar solution? We had 89% yes, 6% awesome. no, and 6% maybe. Awesome. So okay. I'll come back and we'll talk about the, using it as a webinar solution and some of the different ways we use what we, what we use. Mm -hmm. so that's Great. good. Um, so two things here at Learning YouTube that you're going to want to know about are your video manager, because if you click on video manager and we click live events, um, this is where we can get started and record a live event. And this is where I told you before, kind of a un, kind of a well kept secret really, I think. Most people don't know that they're eligible for live events or that they can use them on YouTube. But if I click new live event, you'll see that I can add a title, I can make it I can make this a uh, YouTube for now or for later, put in a description, put in my tags. I can decide whether I want it to be public or unlisted or totally private. What does that mean? Well, public means what it says, right? Everybody knows about it. Unlisted means people who have the link to your YouTube video know about it. Private means only the people that you've invited and given the link to know about it and can watch it. So you're really considerably limiting this down, and you also need to really think about using the complete privacy feature um, of this, because it may make it difficult for even the people that you've invited privately to watch in some cases. So just keep that in mind. But um, anybody within this Hangout panel that uh, that's recording with us, let's say we had 10 people here, which we could have, or we could have 15 people in a business Hangout on Air panel, they, um, they could be recorded privately and have access to that recording. They'd be the only ones that could see it. So yet another way to record a Google Hangout that, again, lots of people don't know about. And if you come to live events here, instead of seeing this, you're going to see a place for you, where you can sign up for live events, and it'll explain to you how to do that. Um, Sharon, if you remember, when we first were doing this, it took us, gosh, 100 people to be able to be eligible for live events. Right, I remember, right. but now I'm still not entirely the... sorry. I'm still not yeah. entirely sure what the difference is between a live event and a hangout on air. I'm not. Can you yeah. clarify what the difference is? The the only real difference is kind of the privacy, in that you you have more control mm -hmm. over the privacy, and it comes through YouTube for YouTube being used as hangouts on air, because you can see here it says quick using Google Plus Hangouts on air. 
Right. So we're still we're still utilizing Hangouts on Air, but we're not creating an event. We're not um, we're not really getting the word out about this particular video. So live events just kind of gives us more control about how we spread the news on it publicly, if that makes sense. It's yeah, just it another way of recording. Okay, it does. It's just another place kind of to start a Hangout on Air, but with more options. So it exactly. almost seems like, why wouldn't you always do it that way since it has more control? You would think, but yet sometimes we like the idea of going live so that other people get to see us and we can develop a whole new audience that sees us, right? So it's, it's just something you want to be aware of and kind of think through. The, you, can, you can use Hangouts really successfully to build your audience in a way that you never really dreamed of being able to do before. Um, so you want to make that stuff public. But on the other hand, if you're doing a private mastermind or a private coaching group, you want to keep that stuff very private, close to the vest, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's probably a paid program, um, so something you want to think through. And then, of course, channel is important to know here because this tells us whether we're our channel is verified, whether we're in good standing. Um, it will let us enable monetization. Anything that we want to enable here, if we want to enable paid content, which you have to have a thousand subscribers for. So I'm working on that one. I'm about uh, 200 and 240 shy. <laughs> and then you can actually offer paid content through YouTube. You've got fan funding, so you can actually work with uh, YouTube to build and get more subscribers to your channels. So There's a lot of great stuff that you can do here. Um, unlisted and private videos. So these, this is one place you want to take a look at when you're first getting started in YouTube to see what you're eligible for, what you have set up and don't have set up. And if there are things that you want, like external annotations, you want to make sure that you uh, click on them and get them set up right away. So that's just kind of a little brief intro of YouTube. There's so many. Th We've got 20... Uh, five modules just on YouTube alone. So much stuff in here. So something to be um, to be aware of that it really is packed with things. Mm -hmm. So I'm coming back for a moment. I'm going to unshare. There is a comment slash question from John that says, I saw a post where we could have a placeholder for events that ranks fast, faster than we could Wait, that ranks fast, then we could add a recorded video to the placeholder after and get fast rankings for the video. Okay. I'm not quite sure what you mean by that, but I will say that the first things that Google search... Um, oh, Janet, that's a good question, Janet. Um, there are aspects of Google Plus that are going to be phased out, but not immediately. And I don't think it's going to be anything that's going to affect any of us. So I wouldn't be too concerned about it. Um, okay, so going back, so placeholder ranks before the event. Yes. Yeah. What, what we do for the placeholder to rank before the event, John, is that um, if you have your own blog and you create a post, in the lower right-hand corner, and, and actually, um, I'm going to have you do this for me, Sharon. Can you? No, I'd have to share my screen. I'm going to share my screen. I can't show the links, but in the lower right-hand corner, there's an area called links. If you take that link... And as we get on, because a lot of times we'll get on like, what, an hour or half an hour beforehand, mm -hmm. you know, chat a little bit before the webinar starts. And um, I could take that embed code, embed it over on my blog, and that video will rank before the video has even begun. Mm. How cool is that? So we've already kind of got it rolling and got it in place to be ranked very, very quickly. So that, oh, that okay. I think, is what you're talking about, John. So I could have taken that. That link, right, the embed code, and put it right over on a blog post. Put it right over on your blog, and you okay. it gives you traction coming up. And right. I do a lot of things along with that. You know, we look at more automation type things, like lots of people are using IFTTT and Zapier, and um, those are all different programs that let you do little scripts that share your content around, and there's a bunch of stuff that you can do with those. They're like little, um, little zaps or recipes, they call them. And if I do that and post that on my blog, it actually will post it to Tumblr and a number of different places. So you can see you can get a considerable amount of social traction on something like that before you even really get started. That's pretty wild. <laughs>
So let me see. I'm going to try sharing my screen here so you guys can see the inside of the Hangout screen. Yeah, my mind's going with all these different options. I'm going to have to go watch this replay just to take notes. <laughs> I know we kind of covered a lot of we kind of covered a lot of ground today. Okay, bear with me here a second. I went to share and my other screen popped up. There we go. We can okay. see Sharon twice. <laughs> I don't see. Oh, there I am. Okay. <laughs> So two Sharon's, but if you if you look inside of here, um, you'll see that we've got the, uh, the show. You'll see my Webinar Jam app right now over here, which is up, which is how we keep track of everybody here on Webinar Jam, in case you guys were interested. Um, Showcase is that app that I talked about. It's disabled right now, but if we were in an event, it would allow us to add different uh, websites. It could put our Google Plus profile in. There's a number of different things, and they would all show up here. And really simple to just most of these most of the apps are actually very simple to just activate, play with, put some things in, start a little mini event, invite a few friends, just see how it works. So very easy to kind of test and run and do. Showcase is immediately activated in all all the events that you do. So you can actually do a little mini webinar right from the events page just using Hangouts alone without buying any fancy software. Q and A is also one of those things that you'll see in the event. Um, again, it's disabled right now because we're not in an event, but you would see the ability to go through and have questions and answers popping up so that we can answer questions that people are asking from inside of the event we're in. So I, I guess there's no way for me to share that screen? Will it no. No, it's no way to share that. And then, of course, um, can the camera app, it you know gives us a little camera so we can take photos from within inside um, the hangout that we're in. Mm -hmm. Remember I talked about the pictures, and of course the hangout toolbox is probably one of the most important to know for us because we want to make sure we do a little bit of branding and you know show our lower third of where you can find more information about us. So I just figured while I was here, you know, I might as well make a little run through so people can see some of the more popular apps. It's really tons and tons of apps that you have access to. Yeah, you can fact, go a little crazy though. Yeah, I was going to say, in fact, if we click the three buttons, there's um, MindMeister as a mind mapping app. Um, Symphonical is a whiteboard app. There's lots of doodling apps. Um, remote desktop, you can actually take over a client or a, somebody you're working with, take over their computer through Google Hangouts. So ton of different things, and if you go to Add Apps, you'll just see even many, many more from there. And again, so, gonna... question about the showcase. Yeah. Um, from Philip. Says John, how do we manage the showcase? Is there a way to put one showcase up and replace it later with another link and have them set it up in advance? Yeah, no, there's not. It's not like inside here, which is one of the reasons that I like Webinar Jam so much or Easy Webinar or one of the webinar solutions, they actually give the option to push out the offer that you want at, at that particular given time. And what we have within Hangouts is not that. Um, we, just, we just get to look at kind of the scroll of these are some of the things that you might want to take a look at related to what we're talking about today. So, but it's still, it's similar to the push option here where we can push out an offer. Okay. A little different. A little different. Not quite as marketing oriented, but kind of fills the same purpose. Um, I see some other, I just saw another question. Can you integrate Google Hangouts with Google Helpouts? Well, you know, Google Hangouts and Google Helpouts were like this. They were completely tied together. Google Helpouts has gone away. I hate to tell you, but um, I, I thought it was a great program. It was a great way to get, um, you know, in front of new coaching clients and all different things. But Google Helpouts, unfortunately, has gone away and gone bye-bye. Whether they'll replace it with something new or not, I don't know. But um, right now, Google Helpouts has gone away. All right, David, you had a question for me. Are you going to update your Hangouts PLR after this? I will take Probably. a look at it. <laughs> well, this is more, you know, we're using Webinar Jam. Um, I think we updated it or checked it a few months ago, so I have to see if anything's changed. We update our materials, like, a lot. 
um, and it's not unusual to come into a hangout and all of a sudden see that it's like the world's changed overnight. It's, it's really not surprising. So it's kind of hard to stay on top of that, but that's one of the things that I think Ted and I do particularly well is stay on top of that stuff so that, um, you know, you guys don't have to kind of wade through and find this and that and figure it out. We're on so frequently that it's easy for us to just go, oh, that's new, that's new. And it's surprising how many, how frequently we say, wow, yeah, that that's new and we've seen that and all that stuff. So I'm going to do something really cool right now that I hope you guys enjoy. But I'm gonna bring my buddy Ted in over here, and uh, let him come say hello. Are you gonna do the uh, invite a attendee? I am. That's a, that's a webinar jam feature, right? It is. Only? It is. So what we can do here, which is really really neat, again one of the things that I loved about Hangouts from the beginning, and when we were doing a lot of telesummits and we're looking for the tool, um, and we kind of spec that out. I was amazed to find out it looked just like Webinar Jam. Hey, look who showed up from Egypt. Live from Egypt, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ted Wasco. Here, Whoa, it looks like you're from Egypt, too. Holy cow. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, I'll just go for a... Oh, you want me to pop you the back? <laughs> So let me show, let me say to you that this is one you. of the this is one of the dangers of bringing someone in, that you know, you just got to keep that in mind. <laughs> I'm here hey, now. Go. I'm here now. Go. It's here now. So Ted's. And I do apologize for the connection because it is absolutely lousy connection right through this um, actual hangout. I've been going in and out like a yo-yo. So. Uh, it's great to actually be on here at all. So I hope uh, with the questions that I've been answering, that has helped people. Um, Doing awesome. And let, let John get on with his presentation. And nice to see you, Sharon. Nice to see you too. <laughs> and I, you know what? I should just point out that what I'm doing as we go, because every time you talk with a Hangout, um, it switches to whoever's making noise. So sometimes you can end up showing up even if you're not doing anything. So like right now, if I click on my I can click on my picture down at the bottom because you see the pictures of everyone who's actually invited to be a presenter. And then I can only be seen like John, say hello. Hello. Hi. Right. Everybody. So he doesn't show up. But if I unclick myself so that I do not it puts a white box around. Then if John says something. Hi everybody. It changes. So it changes it over. And oh, if I say anything. <laughs> <laughs> and now you see right. Ted just changed over. Which so. gets really distracting. I mean, look at us going back and forth and back and forth. It can, um, it can be. So, you know, it's important that if you're producing the event that you moderate that and you try to control that as much as possible so that the people that you really want to be have seen get seen and the people that, you know, not so much, that you're really on top of that. And so that's like another little piece of what we do. Um, when people are getting started or maybe somebody's got a big launch, we help with the production a lot of times. So, in fact, I just did one recently for a big um, JV partner in the self-improvement space is very, a very well-known marketer. So, same thing. Just was a little nervous about getting started. We did three, web, three webinar GM uh, scenarios and it was exciting because he brought on the people he wanted to get testimonials from. They did live testimonials as part of the three videos that they did it was geniusly set up. So very, very nicely done and made for a great launch uh, platform for him. So we had three great webinars to use as part of the launch process. So anyhow, Ted, anything else you'd like to say before I put you back? No, all I'll say is uh, another tip there. You'll see the reflection of my glasses. And that's due to bad lighting because I'm just in a hotel room here. Um, if I'd have been on... Uh, Last week, you'd had a nice view that John did. He was sailing down the Nile with me, so it was just like he was there. Yeah, it was going to be cool, I must admit. <laughs> underneath the bridge. Um, but, yeah, if you've got glasses like me, a tip would be to take the brightness down on your screen. If you take that right the way down, now can you see that the actual glasses aren't coming back so much? So if you take the brightness down on your screen, that is one way to um, allow people to see your eyes or obviously take them off. Um, then people can see them. Right. And when you're talking to people, try to talk into the camera 
so people um, think that you're actually talking to them and them alone because you're looking directly into the camera. Don't be looking down like that all the time because you need to engage with people. Exactly. So um, people were asking too, like why you look blurry or why it looks blurry there, and the the big reason for that is that um, the bandwidth obviously is one. Uh, that's probably actually the biggest one there. But you're also wireless, so wireless the bandwidth and uh, you know you want to be hardwired. You want to have a fairly decent um, internet connection. We found that kind of the sweet spot for it is around 10, 12 download, the, the minimum 10, 12 download. Um, four or five upload speed. You want to have a combination of the two. A lot of times they don't give you a good combination of both. So, so anyhow, I'm going to put you back now, Ted. Thanks for joining. Okay, and I will stop on for a few minutes later, but um, otherwise we'll be missing dinner. All right, well, we don't want you to miss dinner. That would be terrible. All right, we'll have fun. But... Here we go. All right, thanks again. See you later. I think we lost him now anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think it's from me putting him back. So what, what, what one of the other cool things uh, of Webinar Jam you just saw, it was easy for me to go and grab Ted, bring him in, and put him back. And it literally, it's like it takes you out of your chair at home um, and puts you right back in the broadcast after you leave here. So it works out fantastic. Um, really a nice way of doing that. So Webinar Jam has a lot of tools that we like for marketing and definitely makes it a little bit easier to work with than, say, regu a regular Google Hangout event. Now, we're coming up on an hour, so I want to see what we want to focus on last. I mean, uh, learning how to use Hangouts as a webinar solution was one, and then the podcasting was another big question as well. So do you have any other um, things related to using it as a webinar solution you could add? No, I mean, I'd say that probably the, the three best webinar solutions that we know of, um, well, actually, I, I think there's really only two, and that's Easy Webinar and um, uh, Webinar Jam are probably the best of the, the two going. Um, there are some others, but, you know, I found some issues with using them. So they just seem to be the easiest two to use. And we, for the longest time, we were using... Uh, webinar Jam for our live events and Easy Webinar for our um, automated ones. Now, the guys from Webinar Jam, Mike and Andy, are going to have an automated solution coming up soon, so I'm looking forward to seeing what that looks like because, um, you know, I, I don't know. Many of you might have even seen us in the promotion of Webinar Jam because Ted and I had our little sound bites in there, here and there, and uh, we did get to talk a little bit. But, but one of the things that we said is we saw 50% of our business or more going is in webinars now, and that we saw much more of that going that way this year um, between doing, uh, oh gosh, you know, the podcasting and all the different things that we do. So definitely a much larger percentage even than what we originally stated we see going that way. So you want to be able to have a combination of evergreen things going on automatically and then live webinars that you've, you know, that you're constantly creating. And those can all be repurposed in multiple ways, as we talked about, podcasts and memes and, you know, social media fodder and put them all over the place. So hope that helps you guys with that stuff. But um, those are the two, I think, to watch. Webinar Jam, I think, is the easiest to set up and work with. I think you'd agree with that, Sharon. Well, so far, I mean, I haven't so experienced a lot of different ones. Webinar Jam's definitely been easy. Um, the setup was, after looking at the sales page, it was so complicated, and then the setup was so easy. But I did use Webinar Express one time, which is now Webinar Ignition. And that's a much, much uh, cheaper solution, but mm -hmm. I had to do all this fiddling with going and starting the Hangout in one place and then grabbing the link, and I couldn't do that to mm -hmm. the last minute till I started it. Whereas mm -hmm. this, you just set it up, you click you know, log in, you're there. So that was much, much easier. And then Sarah also asked, what about Stealth Webinar for automation? Do you know about that? Oh, that's, I guess, an evergreen solution for... About what webinar? Stealth Webinar. Stealth Webinar. I don't know much about Stealth Webinar, to be honest. Um, I know there's people who really, really like it. I know it's fairly pricey, um, as I recall, but um, some people really, really like it for automated webinars. Mm-hmm. So, but just something to think about. That's what we decided to use, and 
we've been very, very happy with it. And uh, we've been doing a lot of work on Facebook with 22 Social. And um, I think that for our podcast coming after probably, I don't know, either mid-May or June, we'll probably start broadcasting live through Facebook through 22 Social. What's that? 22 Social is an app that lets you... It lets you do basically a live hangout embedded on Facebook with chat and everything else. So it and just we could, links the two? It links hangout, yeah. hangout or Hangout on Air? It is a Hangout on Air. Okay. Hangout on Air. So it, actually, it could actually link an event. Um, it could even be one that we've done with um, Webinar Jam. Even uh, We could have it set up as a webinar and deliver it there at the same time. Essentially, you can deliver... I hang out in multiple places, you just have to embed it in multiple places. So we could be delivering the same broadcast on our blog, wherever it might be. It's a paid app for Facebook? It's a paid app for Facebook, okay. but it's a pretty it's a pretty slick one. It's great to be able to do um, Facebook advertising with, because it's right there built into the page, so there's a lot mm -hmm. of great features to being able to use it and build a list. Um, well, it's you could cool. use it, could you use it within a group? So say if I wanted to of uh, broadcast this hang on hang out on air in my Facebook group. I think it's only page level at this stage. It's not okay. group level. So you could do it on the page though. But you could do it on the page, so which is pretty cool. Pretty neat. I'm seeing we got tons of questions still coming in here. Um but how many people one should be able to answer hang out versus hang out on air? Hang out versus ha huh? <laughs> how many people? Sorry, I know there's so many. How many people can you have on a hangout slash hangout on air? You can have uh, ten here in the panel, depending if you've got the the uh, personal version of Google Hangouts. If you've got business hangouts apps, you can have up to fifteen along the, the bottom strip. Um, I actually have a business hangouts apps um, one as well for you know the business. Uh, Google Business Apps gives you more people in the panel. Fifteen. That's, that's a separate app, or is that part of Google Apps? It's part of Google Business Apps, so part it's separate. Business. It's separate. It's a good. It's um, you know, as if your whole company is on Google Apps, kind of a thing. It's a monthly okay. subscription. Yeah, monthly subscription. I think it's like six bucks a month, something like that, to be able to use it. I may have that because I use my email through Google Apps. You might well have to that. Check it out. <laughs> Yeah, not, not for the faint of heart. There's some advantages, you know, for coaching because you can have more people, but um, there's also more privacy. They want to try to keep the, the hangout as private as possible. So mm -hmm. that kind of um, makes it a little bit more difficult in some ways to work with. But hangouts on air are unlimited because it's being broadcast to YouTube. Yeah. It's just who can show up in the It's just who panel. can show up, and sometimes you have difficulty inviting people in where they're outside of your so-called company zone. Mm -hmm. it, they, they try to keep it very private around, you know, your company zone is what they do. Um, Are you okay with time, John? I got all the time. Going going over yeah, no, I, I'm okay. fine with time. I'd love to answer the questions, no problem at all. As long as there are questions, you know, I'm happy to stay for a while. Right now experiencing overwhelm. You know, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's a great Me too. thing to say, you know, but don't get overwhelmed because one of the things that you know Sharon is gonna bring up shortly is um, our beginning course and one of the things I try to do is eliminate the overwhelm from that try to give people a place where they could partner up and learn in a safe environment and get some daily lessons on how to get started so that you know exactly where to start and not get completely overwhelmed by that so yes I know you may be feeling some overwhelm right now Take a deep breath with me. Let it out. It's all, you know, it's really not that bad. Um, but I'd encourage you, when you start to learn Hangouts, get somebody to practice with. It makes it that much easier. It, it, like I said, it's simple but not easy. It's not as hard as it looks. All right. I don't. Does it look that hard? <laughs> it's really well, not that bad. there's just so many things you can do. Yeah. You have to focus on one, trying one thing, like just yeah. hang out on air. Um, just doing it to maybe a small group of people or maybe just one person to test it out. Right. And then you can just delete the video. Yeah, start want. recording some, start to create stuff that you could use for content for your blog, perhaps. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to, that's kind of how I got started. Yeah, just a few, just a couple minutes, five minutes. Yeah. Of I, got, I got friends, we did interviews with one another. And slides. 
You want to mm -hmm. explain that bit that you can do, slides. you know, can sharing do slides. the screen? Mm -hmm. You can do slides because a lot of people are afraid of showing their face. And, you know, what I would say is don't be like that because, um, you know, people associate with your face, associate with your voice. They like the way you sound. They associate with your face. Um, I often tell this story that um, I met my wife through a video dating service. That's going to say something, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, you know, the video was a big deal in that. And I think it really sold me on the power of video at the time because I would see people and I'd be like, wow, you know, that person looks really cool. It looks, she looks like somebody I really like to meet. And then I'd watch the video. I was like, oh, my gosh, what could I have been thinking? It was really a, a big mind changer because you could see somebody that really wasn't going to click with you right away. And I think the power of video is that it really pulls people into you that really associate and resonate with you. That's mm -hmm. big. Because when we first started making video, I one couldn't believe who was watching. I found out Mike Filsane was spying on us, which was pretty hysterical. Um, he's, he's a good friend of ours. But uh, I was surprised that he was watching and changing his marketing campaigns and stuff because of some of the stuff he saw us doing. That was really neat. You wouldn't think that you would have that kind of effect on a, on a big marketer. It's pretty exciting to see. But the other thing is that people were seeing our videos and going, wow, you guys are just so down to earth, so honest, and it really resonates with us, that they were li literally coming out of the woodwork emailing and contacting us, and it, it was wild. Mm -hmm. you know. So you can kind of see that that's the power that video can bring. And um, it's nice also if you don't really like being on camera, at least starting it with a couple minutes like I'm just saying hello and then I could switch over to my screen to another screen to show my slideshow and be talking through that and then come back again right. so you know if you don't want to be on screen the whole time so let me do the I'll do the slideshow quick because it's common that um, doing slides for the first time whether you're doing it through Google Presenter or whether you're doing it through um, this is PowerPoint but they all work kind of the same way in that you can't present your slides full screen. You want to combine, confine it to a window. If you looked at how I went through tabs where I was showing stuff live, I had them all tabbed across in one window. So I could just go from tab to tab to tab to tab so I don't have to come out and re-screen share. So that's one secret to doing that if you're going to go from tab to tab to tab. Secret here is you can't present your PowerPoint full screen not going to work, so don't do that. You want to present it from a window. So the way that we do that is we go to um, set up slideshow. Hope that's the right thing. Yeah, it's the right thing. <laughs> Even I get confused every once in a while here. But you can see I've clicked. They give you presented presented by a speaker full screen, browsed by an individual window is what you want to select. Um, and then with that, what happens is it when you set it up to do the presentation. It puts it in an individual window, and um, hmm. I'm just going to hopefully be able to present here. So can you guys see that? Yep. Okay. So you can see, and this is the presentation that we do on hand casting. Um, and that's really the trick. You know, you just want to keep it confined to a window, and then the rest is simple. You know, um, you see a lot of things here that, deal with podcasting that we talked about today. It's really kind of brings it all together with Hangouts, podcasting, and social media. Um, iTunes, another big search engine, right? People mm -hmm. creating content, which you can associate it with, telesummits, interviews, webinars, podcasts. And this is where we actually go through and we talk about how to combine all of this together and, um, you know, pick a niche, do your market research, um, decide on the type of your show, and artwork, and bring this all together with podcasting. So you can see it's really Hangouts can be the multiple repurposing machine when you get done with it. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, That's for, for, sure. for sure. I think we've uh, we've tapped you, tapped you your can, brain. I can, I'm I sure can could keep go going on forever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. we could keep you going for hours. Yeah, and I mean, that slideshow thing that. when I, the one the time when I did a slideshow. Um, I used a separate monitor, and I just did that start slideshow, and then you can, if you're sharing screens, you can pick which window you have open. But you did it differently just now. Yeah, you, you confine it to a window. 
and then um, it, right. that's it, the, the secret to doing a PowerPoint or a Google slideshow is confining mm -hmm. it to a window, and then it works perfectly. Yeah. So if you can do that, and then if you've got one screen, you just want to kind of coordinate it so you can get from screen to screen easy. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty straightforward from there. Mm -hmm. I highly really recommend cool. two monitors, though. I love two monitors. Two monitors makes a huge, huge difference. And yeah. um, the other thing that I would say is if you're deciding to do something more telesummit-oriented, um, podcast-oriented, the only thing that you're going to want to consider is optimizing for sound in your video, and that's why you know I've got a Yeti microphone, and I talk really close to it. You can you can see there's a big difference in um, in the way that you hear things. Yeah, I have so, my Bluetooth uh, Blue Snowball yeah, Blue Snowball microphone. Blue Snowball. So that's that's something you want to be aware of. If you're going to do that, then yeah, you may need to take it up a notch. And, and do that. Um, people often ask about the stand that we use. Uh, this is just a Rode PSA, PSA1 studio arm, the box from it. So <laughs> that's the arm that I've got connected to my Yeti. Um, lighting is another question we get a lot of times. These are, these are the fancy lights that we use. You may have used one under your car hood or something. <laughs> You get a Home, Home Depot, eight, ten bucks. You know, you buy a couple of these, you clip them on your desk, and it gives you some instant <laughs> extra lighting. So I mean, you can see we're really, we're really upscale here. Um, <laughs> we've got one of these, the backgrounds. You can have custom backgrounds printed with your branding on them and stuff. How cool is that? There's a place down in, in Texas that does that. We print them on like a microfiber material. It's awesome. Um, I just got uh, one of these backgrounds. It's like a kid's play toy. You can fold up and um, put it up on top of one of those big photographic stands that you see photographers use and you can get, you know, photographic lighting kits fairly reasonably. So there's a lot of things that you can do to slowly scale up as you go along and, you know, improve your scenario. But you can start out pretty easy, pretty easy and pretty straightforward. Um, Reverend Steve asked, any experience with run click? Um, I have used it. I know some people who swear by it. Um, I, I, uh, I'm very good, good friends with Walter Bayless. Um, the particular WordPress setup that I had, it didn't work well with. And so uh, it didn't work well with me or for me, but I know a lot of people that it has worked well. It was definitely a very, very inexpensive way to get started with, um, with a webinar solution. So that's about all I can say about it, Reverend Steve. All right, there's a few more questions, and then we should really... That's a great up. question. <laughs> yeah, no, this is a good question, though. I like this one. Uh, Sarah mm -hmm. says it seems yeah. like you need more than one person to run it. Um, is it easy to do a hangout alone? It really isn't bad to do a hangout alone. I would suggest that if you're doing something big, a big product launch or something like that, um, it is much easier to have a couple people on hand with you to keep track of it. Um, if you have a VA or administrative assistant that can kind of monitor questions for you, it's a big help. Um, you can see from here, if I was speaking and trying to do questions, yeah, I can do it. It's a little bit difficult. Uh, it kind of looks like I'm running away from the presentation to answer questions. So it can be a little bit overwhel be a little overwhelming for me. <laughs> so yes, there, there are times when you might want to consider having somebody to monitor the questions for your friend, uh, whatever it might be. Or so. you could just, if you're doing a presentation, just make sure that it's clear that you're only going to do questions at certain points so that yeah. you just present and you say, okay, I'm going to take a break and And do questions, questions at the end. I like to work them in. It's great I've got Sharon today so she can kind of keep an eye on things. But the other thing that we can do um, is that we can take and um, roll up the questions too. So for instance, if I only wanted to take questions at the end, I could, I'm not going to do it, but I could roll up the chat so that you guys can't make comments during a period of time I'm presenting yeah. and then open it up for questions after. So that is another great thing about Webinar Jam that allows us to do. And there's so many things I could just go on and on with a list of different things that we can do with this that um, you can't do just through Hangouts alone. But Hangouts alone for free, great place to start practicing, doing webinars, getting your getting your um, your tribe involved, as we'd say. Have I found that events rank better than Hangouts? Okay, um, I have found kind of 
the combination because um, Google Events are part of Google. Obviously, Google Hangouts are part of Google. I, I would say that they kind of rank equally well. Um, they do both rank, so you want to keep that in mind. If there's something that you really want to get out to the public, you do want to make sure that you do an event for it. And even if I'm doing a webinar GM event that I can't do, say, a Hangout event for, I do create a Google event with a trailer in it that then brings the link to my Webinar Jam event. So I do use events, um, even with Webinar Jam. One thing that's cool, particularly cool, about Webinar Jam that I love is that um, now they've created a way that we can say that we want to be included in Webinar Jam's uh, listing. And so they have that listing. And you know, I, I don't know if I shared this with you the, the other day, Sharon, but just from some webinars that I put out, oh my gosh, as much as a year ago, I still get monthly subscribers, weekly subscribers, sometimes even daily subscribers from them. So if you did a bunch of webinars and just even left them out, you could bring in a whole bunch of subscribers. So that's yeah. something that kind of caught my brain. It would be interesting. Um, Is yeah. there anyone on here who came here via Webinar Jam? I mean, I just added that at the last minute, so I don't imagine there would be. But um, it'd be hard anyone, to tell. No, they wouldn't I mean, be able to respond answers. through the chat either. They would be just oh. seeing it. However, you never know. You okay. might find that somebody digs it up and finds you this way. And so, another nice thing is if you're watching on replay, you can send a question. Right. There's a place to send a question. Right. In nice. fact, you should say, you know, if you're watching this, you mm -hmm. out there, if you're watching this right now, <laughs> contentsparks.com. And Sharon's got a great Facebook group, so if you, if you, you know, bumped into this, you're just watching it now for the first time and you want to, like, watch more, Go over there. Look her up on Facebook. Yeah. So send gotta an stick email. that stuff. Gotta stick that stuff in, you know. Or send Sharon an email. She's easy to find. Or send John an email. Send it. We're, yeah, different places. Send us both <laughs> an email. I love that idea. And um, actually, the, the your offer is in the pop in. Pop in. And I wasn't sure whether that only shows up when I click on that tab. For the pop in, you know the the free your free Hangouts Made Easy course. You no, know, you can you can click it and um, mm -hmm. and I think it's up now. It is there. I had loaded yeah. it, but I wasn't. You load sure. and put on. This Looks is like, like I'm, getting, I'm getting my own tutorial. You guys, you go. guys see that? <laughs> if not, if you go to if you click on pop ins, you will see right. the offer that I gave you out there. So um, if you guys click on pop ins, if you can't see it and you're on the chat, if you're not seeing it. Go to Poppins, and you'll see that offer. Uh, we'd love to have you. It's um, it's actually a quarter of our total class. It's the whole Hangouts class. But we also have a whole class on Google+, Plus, a whole class on YouTube, and a whole class on handcasting with podcasting and, you know, mind-blowing stuff that you'll love. So we go way beyond just Hangouts. Hangouts is one of those things that's been kind of overdone. I think a lot of people understand a lot of the basics of Hangouts. We can tidy that up for you and kind of bring it together, um, but, I, you know, when we differentiate, our, dip, oh boy, differentiate <laughs> ourselves, um, I, you know, I'd like to think it, people look at us as the, um, the guys who really use it for content creation and podcasting and know us by that, and casting, that's where it's at, mm -hmm. so, um, I don't know, I think we've, like, gone through, like, all the questions, and I'm, I'm not a stranger, guys, so if you got questions later, you know, feel free to look me up. There are a let, couple more in here. Let, yeah, go ahead if you want. Uh, yeah, there are a couple more. Let's try and um, finish up, and then people can send questions afterwards. Yeah. Seems like uh, you need more than one person. We talked about. Um, does the person have to be in a different location? Can the, oh, can the helper be in a different location? We're all in sure. different locations here. Yeah, um, it doesn't matter. So I'm in New Jersey. John is in New Hampshire. I'm in New Hampshire. Right. Uh, Ted was in Egypt. And for, my, today. <laughs> for, for today. For today, right? It's usually um, in the UK. Um, my assistant, Sophia, is in Panama. Oh, so cool. we're all in different places. And, of course, you guys are all in different places. Nice. So nice. The, because it's all virtual, yeah. you don't. it doesn't matter at all where no. you are. In no, fact, it might be worse if you're in the same place because you'd hear all the noise and feedback. And It could be much worse if you're in the same place. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is if you're in the same place, you're going to be sharing bandwidth at that particular location. So mm -hmm. that's, going to be, um, that's going to be a problem. 
Um, Sarah had asked too, can you get your story in order privately on G Plus before you launch it and it goes public? Um, well, you certainly could get it privately in a document and then be able to copy it over when you're ready for it to go public. So don't feel like um, you got to just like slowly write it. I don't think there's a problem to slowly writing it there, though, to be honest with you. Um, it's not really like a website going public. I think in social media people expect a certain amount of, yeah, it might take me five minutes to write this up or, you know, and you kind of build on it over days. I actually go back to mine from time to time and, um, you know, work on that and maybe add more stuff to it that I didn't have before. Ray is asking, what causes the duplication over and over? Um, not quite sure what you're saying. What do you mean, Ray, as far as the duplication over and over? So that, at the end uh, of the screen, you know, where if you're trying to share your screen? Oh, the, screen the funnel of death? Is that what you're talking about, Ray? Just clarify that for me. I'd be glad to answer. I think you might be, you might be talking about what we call the funnel of death, where um, somebody who's presenting can't share their own Hangout screen because the Hangout screen actually refreshes. But as you can see, um, I can share the Hangout screen because I'm not, I'm not white boxing that person. Sharon was white boxing me, different. So you could see I was able to share the screen with no problem. Um, if you want to do that, the easy way to do that is just have a uh, second machine um, that you put in. Works like a piece of cake. So you can do that as well. All right. The last question I see for now, I think, is. Uh, well, there's a question about where to get the backgrounds and a question about adding PowerPoints and Docs. I'm not quite sure. PowerPoints and Docs. We can share PowerPoints and Docs within here. Um, mm -hmm. We can add PowerPoints and Docs. Um, I, elaborate on that a little bit for me, John. I'm not quite sure mm -hmm. what what you mean about adding PowerPoints and Docs. We can, um, we can certainly, like let's say we want to add a PowerPoint to a podcast that we did. We can, we can do that. We just add the, add the docs right uh, in that podcast. So there are a lot of ways that we can do those things. Um, I'm just not quite sure what you mean by that. So if you could elaborate on that a little bit more for me, I would be glad to answer that question. Just need a little more information. And where do you get the background from in Texas? Uh, it's a place called Owens Originals. Okay. Owens Originals. And they print them up. They're on like a nice microfiber material. Um, you can hang it on your photo stand like I have behind me. It looks, they look great. One of my, one of my clients is an uh, EFT practitioner, and she had one done. She told me about it. She lives in Texas. Probably <laughs> how she knows. Um, she told, I think they're in Texas. It's kind of where I remember, Midwest someplace. I'm pretty sure they're in Texas. She uh, told me about it, and um, the microfiber, I mean, you can just take it, toss it in a laundry basket, pull it up, flip it, and toss it back on your thing. It looks great. You can have anything printed on. So you can have your branding printed on. You can have a nice background, woodsy scene, or, you know, whatever turns you on. And they're actually so inexpensive, you could actually have a couple of them done. They're like $50, $60, which is, I mean, it's not super inexpensive, but it's inexpensive as things are for something that's custom printed. So... Um, can you repurpose a Hangout like you can a Hangout on air? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've, we reproduce them a whole bunch of different ways. Hangout, the only Hangout you're going to be repurpose, repurposing is the one that you record, which would be your Hangout on air. So we could have transcripts made, we could do uh, the podcast, uh, we can do anything from that. Fill up, have Kindle books made for crying out loud. <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can do a lot of things. So, I mean, that's just a, a small part of um, what you're able to do. David says, I think using Google Apps for presentation, docs, etc., don't put much load on your PC, Mac, and don't steal CPU. They tend, I do find that Google Apps for a while was very nicely integrated together, but um, Google recently dropped using kind of that interface to Google Docs, Ted and I actually used to write some of our, our materials together. So I'd be writing and he'd be editing, or I'd be writing and he'd be editing. And it was great. We could actually work on them within Hangouts. It was really the coolest thing ever. Um, now you can transfer documents, and you can actually work with people that same way through Google Drive. 
don't know if you've ever have you ever tried doing that? Yeah. It's really cool. You see the other person yeah. like following you along, trailing yeah. you in Google Drive. It's pretty cool. I was doing that a lot when we were doing our rebranding and we were working on layouts for the page yeah. and different yeah. content for it and um I was working with a consultant and the two of us would just be going back and forth. But yeah. I don't love the actual docs and their slideshow as software, though it's not software I don't love. I still like Microsoft Office. Yeah. But when you need to work with someone at the same time, then it's great. Then it's great. It's so I, I do have one of these white backgrounds. I will tell you, that brings up an interesting an interesting thing. Um, my good friend Jason Benoit one day did a thing with a background. He, a lot of these white backgrounds are white and black, okay? If you've got black hair, do not do it on a black background. You will look like me, bald. <laughs> so not a good thing to do. But yes, um, if and you know, women, you probably don't want to look bald either. So I'm just saying, it might not be, it might not be good to do. But yeah, white photo, white. That's all I've got. It looks like one of those kids' toys, you know, that you used to have for your children. That you fold it all up and you put it in a bag and slap it up on the back. It's a portable stand. I'm Never sorry, this thing is impossible to fold up. <laughs> I have one. These, it's impossible. This, I don't have it up now that. because I don't want to have to try and fold it up. I just have a folding screen, but I That's do have it. one of those. Yeah, Dix, I, no. Dixie says OwensOriginals.com. Yes, that, yeah. that is correct. <laughs> great. That is correct. Um, and I know a couple people who ordered from them. I always try to be, a, they, they said they got an affiliate program. I could never get a response back. Um, <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, enjoy. They, they got great stuff. They can do, like, anything that you want on a background. Very, very neat. Well, I think we're going to have to wrap up now. It's We've been here for a while, and this has been great. Um, I think we've gotten all the questions. I'm well, sure we have been here be for a while. while. Yeah. Well, it seems like it's gone really quickly. It does. But I'll leave the, the popping up. Um, people can watch the replay here. I should switch back to me so I can say yeah. hello. Anybody um, want to come in for a ride before we get done? Oh yeah! In. Anyone want to come and say hello? Yeah, because we could before we end broadcasting, we could bring some bring a couple people in. Kind of like the way we hi. yeah, kind of like the way we brought Ted in. It's a feature yeah. in Webinar Jam. Yeah. So just go ahead and put that in the chat if you do want to. Otherwise, just make sure you click on the pop-ins and sign up to get uh, John and Ted's course, the free course, because. <laughs> about this much from an hour and a half. I can't even imagine. I have to go through that. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I guess I did kind of give you the fire hose today, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, you did. And uh, Charlie said, absolutely fantastic webinar. Thank you both. You're welcome. You're welcome. This was a great idea. I'm so glad I brought you on. You're welcome. I, I, this is kind of a new, I'm kind of polishing this up here today. Um, yeah, so if anybody wants to come on, just ask it. Just ask it as a question and say, I'd love to come on. Dave, David said, sure. So I assume that means, sure, you want to come on. <laughs> I'm going right. to assume that. Uh, you want to try bringing them in? How do I do that? Invite yes. a speaker. I see it. Yep. Uh, just, and then what happens? Oh, you can find out. Just watch the panel. <laughs> and, and, um, Invite as a speaker and watch the panel. And we'll see who comes in. But yeah, if anybody wants to pop in, we'd love to have you. Here That's we go. David, David O'Neill joined. And there he is. I'm going to put you on, David. And if you can just say hello. Oh. Hello. Can you hear hey, me? David. Yeah, we can hear you. How's it going? I can hear you, but I can't see you. Well, I'm walking through a few things here that's popping up in front of me, so. Ah, uh, okay. So let's see. Whatever. Let's see. I saw your face there for about a second, and then you disappeared. Do you have your camera on? Yes, that... I do. Huh, maybe I'll try unboxing you so you can see me again, and yes, now let's probably, try you again. Probably yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's an interesting possibility here, and I've found this before. As we start, as you started this, and I happened to plug in my camera after already being on, and I have the feeling that it doesn't sync up correctly. I have a little Microsoft um, uh, webcam, and uh, and, it, and I think that it really has to be plugged in before you start. Hmm. There's a whole bunch of little gotchas that I've run into before, and this, I think, is one of them. Yeah, that can be one of them. Wait, I just clicked on something that said present to everyone. No. No. 
John, what am I doing wrong? I don't know. Stop presenting. <laughs> profile. I can. Oh, whoops! That was not what I wanted to do. I've uh, I've started using Hangouts quite some time ago. I I I like them. I mean, it's, it's I do too. It's incredibly valuable. I find that even for just personal meetings, it's great. I mean, that's why the helper bit from Google was a good idea, but they didn't know how to market it correctly. Go figure. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's very, very true. Um, and, man, they make changes so quickly that it really is um, It's very interesting to watch sometimes. Sure. Sure. Right, okay, so well, I'm just trying to see know. if we've got any other takers to come play with us. Right. <laughs> well, that's interesting because... Um, yeah, I could see John's face at the bottom, but the camera didn't work, so maybe refreshing it helps. I'm not going to risk turning my camera off and on again and losing everybody. Oh, no, no, no. I wouldn't do that either. So, David, thanks for doing that. Thanks sure. for coming in. And I'm going to... You're letting me put uh, put this through the paces here. So I'm going to now... Stop the broadcast. ...return you as an attendee. Oh, okay. there you go. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and Sarah said, when you pull someone on, will it automatically show them live on camera or just photo? Because obviously we couldn't see. It John's will show video. you live. Typically, it will show you live on camera. Um, so I don't know if you want to if you want to try it out. Don't worry too much if you didn't get to make yourself up perfect. <laughs> well, you brought Ted on, and Ted we could see. Yeah, Ted. Ted comes right on. So it's probably something that was an issue with David's camera more right. than anything. That's what I would suspect. So I don't know. Any last takers? Last call. Is there a delay between when we ask a question and when we get an answer? Because that used to, to be the case. Seconds, about 20 to 30 seconds on the average. Um, depending, some places have like slower internet, and it might be 40 seconds to a minute in some you know, other countries like maybe Australia. They have very, very latent internet speeds. So there sometimes takes a long, long time. But you can see you wouldn't want to kind of just bring somebody in without couching them along as to what, what um, you know, whether it was appropriate. Hmm. All right, well, I think, I think we should wrap up. We can wrap I can up. Still see, I can still see David at the bottom of the screen, even though... Can you back. hear me? Yeah. I guess we're there. Oh, interesting. I don't, think you, I don't think you sent him back. I did. Uh, I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. It's yeah. interesting. I went back to Webinar Jam, and I guess I hadn't said I accepted to go into a Webinar Jam, and then I did. And so I, I you know, maybe I just came back in somehow. I don't know. Interesting. I don't know. It's, it's um, odd. I can't send him back. But you I already can. sent him back. I swear I did. <laughs> send him back again. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to tell you a little secret. This happened oh, to God. me about a year and a half ago, and that was that I set up, uh, I, and this is not uncommon, right? I started a, a separate computer to start the Hangout on Air, mm -hmm. and then I got on as a, you know, happy member slash contested presenter on a separate computer, and I there was a way with a and I also had a present or a producer. There was a way actually to, in a sense, shut down having been on, and it stayed on, mm -hmm. so that when I got off, even though I started it, the producer actually still had the web uh, the uh, Hangout on Air, which which I didn't understand at all at the time because I should have owned it. Oh, so, so it was, it was in his YouTube channel? Excuse? It was in his YouTube channel? Is that what you're saying? He still had control over the um, production. It was still there. Even though the, the computer that I started it on, I shut down. Is it a, um, was it on a page that you share? Uh, like could have been. Yeah, because if, if it's a page that you share, um, a lot of times, you know, we get two sets of controls when Ted's on. Because if we if we log in like as different members of the page, and we co-manage it, you know, one owns it, one manages it. Yeah. We actually get two sets of controls. 
we we were uh, speaking of uh, Twenty Two Social. We were actually using Twenty Two Social at the time. Cool. Well, to do the presentation, yeah. you know, so other people could see it. Yeah, I, lo I love that um, aspect of Twenty Two Social. You know, video is big on Facebook, and I think it's going to take off. And um, I like that idea of I, I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to do it, but it's going to be we're going to do some kind of regular Facebook broadcasting from our page or a page um, on Facebook very regularly. The, the, one of the other keys to that, if you're trying to make a business out of 22 Social, is that if you do your presentation, you can actually let other people put it on their 22 Social page Yeah. at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you can actually, in a sense, affiliate, create an affiliate broadcast, which is really neat when you think about... You no, know, that's a concept that I, I, I knew oh, yeah, you that's do, in but there. I hadn't really thought about that. Oh, yeah, but you know that little number that you get for who you are? You give that yeah. to somebody else, and they put it in, and you are on their page, but it's their page, so they get the sign-ups. Wow. Well, there you go. You just heard our biggest secret right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, it, it, it's a fantastic little system, and we were talking about you know being able to broadcast live that way and got a number of people who want to do that with us. So should be I, I, like we brought this up. Station. We brought this up a minute ago, or uh, maybe I did, but it's yeah. the saddest thing of all of this is that you know people are looking at Facebook and going, oh, you know, you know, they're trying to take over Google and all. And they probably are. I mean, everybody wants to share the money. It is amazing how much facility Google actually gives people that they don't know is there. It is really amazing how much you have that they don't know is there. When you talked about business apps earlier, uh, people could run their whole multi-divisional, multinational company on Google yeah. Apps. Yes. Easily. I, I think lots of people do. I was an IT manager for 30 years. I wish I did more of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, I was going to say between that and um, all of the different things that Amazon has for, you know, SES, oh, sure. and oh my gosh, you put those two things together, you can really run some stuff. Mm. So uh, we're now we're giving away all of our secrets here today, folks. Nah, <laughs> so oh, we got more. We got more. Oh my gosh! <laughs> There's crazy. always more, especially always more. as we get more things added. Right, well, press I'm button. gonna have to say I'm gonna have to say goodbye because yeah, can still say, I don't once, think he's gonna go away. But if I go, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, if I leave, I think everybody else leaves. Yeah, so um, don't forget. You can see the replay. You can always get that. Um, click on the Get Started button and get the, the free course. But uh, my kids are about to come home from school. And then wow. there's going to be noise. And they're going to come uh, in and say hello. And I think it's probably time to stop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, John, thanks so much. You want to say any last words? No, just um, hope you guys have enjoyed this. I uh, hope I didn't overwhelm you too much. And don't feel overwhelmed. Just get started. Start out easy. It's incremental progress. You know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Just keep working on it a little time, and you'll get it. So hang in there. If I can help, look me up. All right. Thanks, John. Bye, everyone. Bye. And bye, David. Bye.